microphone. <laughs> Before I ask the question, I would like everybody in here, including the panel, to raise your hand if you would oppose Obamacare. Raise your hand if you oppose Obamacare. It's virtually unanimous. <laughs> virtually. Not quite. Not quite. Now, to the incumbents, that would be Ramkula and Nelson. SB 38 and 43 were two Democratic proposed bills that we both voted for. Okay? In addition to that, there's Obamacare Act dollars for which Mr. Rockford, you received $1,000, I believe, Mr. Nelson, $1,500. Now, in spite of the demands you saw come up, how can you substantiate your voting? Anybody hear the question? No. Okay. SB 38 and 43 were not Democratic sponsored. They were agency sponsored. They came from the park. The <laughs> okay, fine. Keep that. Uh, they were they were sponsored and brought by the Department of Labor Division of Insurance. They were very. Um, they even got watered down before they passed. They were very specific, very surgical in making sure the state of South Dakota did the absolute minimum to fall in line with the federal mandates, which we didn't agree with, and we had the Attorney General fighting for those, with the federal mandates that made sure that we did not lose a, a, a central funding during a year where we were cutting $127 million. The rest of your question, you're going to have to be more specific. Where did I get $1,500? Uh, from Obama. Gentleman, a gentleman about three to the left of you can answer. <laughs> Senate Bill 38 and 43 were sponsored by Christmas by the governor. The governor went to do this. It's minimal compliance to Obamacare. Because we need to set up the exchanges. We did not do that and the passes were out in left field. That was done. The following year, nothing was done. We entered into a lawsuit, so basically we're playing both ends here. Insurance. We're doing Senate Bill 38 and 43, minimal compliance. We entered into the lawsuit, one in 23 states. I consider that good government. We have done nothing to harm ourselves either way. If the Supreme Court does not find this unconstitutional, we're going to be looking at an exchange or something that we have the the minimal framework set up for it. On the other hand, we're in a lawsuit so that this thing is being heard as we speak in front of the Supreme Court. As far as a thousand dollars from a, I don't know what that's about with regard to a donation. I don't know. Campaign Got some, but I don't know who they're from. You know, we're going to have a crisis in this country coming real soon in the area of health we have to provide health care for those that are unable to provide it for themselves. Can we mandate everyone to have health insurance? Well, that's one of the issues. But if they don't have it and they get sick and they qualify for Medicaid, we pay for it. We can continue under that system if you want to. I'm not going to take any issue with mandating people to have health care. You don't want them to have the insurance, fine. I, you know, that, that, that's a philosophical thing. But how are we going to pay for all this? Your hospitals and medical providers complain every day how um, the administration is cutting back on Medicaid and Medicare dollars. But it's all going to affect you because there's going to be procedures that are not going to be available for any of us at some point because we as a country can't afford to pay for them. I don't have a lot of answers in that area. Maybe some of these things is, are not a state issue, but I think Medicaid certainly is because we have to match federal dollars now. We're mandated to match that. We can say we don't want to provide it at all, but I don't think the people of this state would ever want to do that. It's it's a naughty issue, but we're gonna we're gonna face it. It's coming, and all of you are gonna have to decide to what extent you want that care that's available to you. Some 
people can afford it. Most people can't. Not a lot of the procedures they have now. They have robots doing surgery. I heard about that today. Robots. The doc sits at a computer and he's got a robot over here working on it. So I can't, quite frankly, can't tell you how I would have voted on it had I been called to vote on it. I know that I'm opposed to Obamacare. I don't think that those pieces of legislation were sponsored by Democrats, although the federal legislation certainly was. But, you know, the state has to make a decision whether or not they're going to try and do the minimal compliance or they're going to lose federal dollars. That happens all the time in state government. You folks are particularly passionate about this issue, but I can tell you that every year the legislature is faced with passion bills whether it's to change the, the alcohol limit from 0.10 to 0.08, you know, texting will be about the next thing coming down the line, you know, and there's always federal dollars attached to whether or not, you know, we're gonna do that. And the, the bottom line is, is we're in the precarious place in this state. You know, people have always thought, well, it's a good thing, you know, we get all this federal money in South Dakota far more than we pay in taxes. I'm not so sure it's such a good thing at this point because uh, we're, gonna, we're getting a crisis situation in state, in, in the, our federal, financial situation and about two-thirds correct me if I'm wrong friend at least two-thirds of our budget is federal money well I think it, when I, I can remember voting on a two billion dollar budget and then 800 million of it was was uh, general fund state money the 1.2 billion so over half of it is federal money and so uh, we've got a problem on our hands and, and this is just one situation where they made a decision to comply at this point now what's going to happen with the in the feds is going to determine how this plays out. 